Magnus Haystack, Brent Hurst Wealth Management founder. One of your pieces last year named the trillion dollar property collapse was one of the best read pieces on Biz News in 2021. The numbers behind it were astronomical. Before we go into the nuts and bolts of private property investment, I'm going to take this back two steps and go to your tweets this morning. There's a story behind it, Magnus. So tell about tell us about your story about your own property investment into the hardest beers put region and how that unfolded for you. Yes, good day, Justin. You know, like many people, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago, we all got sucked up into the property boom. And I'm talking about the residential property boom. And there was a boom uh, from about 2002 to 2008, driven by lower interest rates, high economic growth, and, and, and people were making hand over fist in the property market, residential as well as, as listed. But, you know, one of the ways to get into the property market was to go and buy an empty stand and you would, you know, then go and bold and then either rent it out or, or sell it again. And many people have built nice uh, personal portfolios doing that historically. I did it myself in the 80s and the 90s and in the early noughties. And uh, then I bought this uh, under, under a heck of a lot of pressure from somebody. I went and I bought the stand at the Harties, Hartebees Wood Dam. And I mean, all the whole dam was being developed and was, it was it was described as the Riviera of South Africa. And, uh, you know, the marketing hype was just, it was very difficult to resist. So lo and behold, I, I bought the stand for, what, 900,000 rand. And very soon thereafter, the property market and the economy took a dive. And I, I didn't eventually decided not to build on the stand. And I thought I will just, you know, kind of sell it very quickly. And I've been actually trying to sell the stand for about 10 years. And I managed to sell it uh, about a month ago. And I was just playing around with some numbers. Um, and I don't even think I'm, I'm 100% including all my costs and opportunity costs uh, because it, there's rates and taxes, there's levies that you have to pay, plus the cost of your of, of the purchase. And I just played around. I got I bought for 900, 13 years later, sold for 400. I had to pay a commission of 10% to sell it. So I effectively got 360,000 Rand. And I played around. What, what I would have done had I invested it in the stock market if I'd done it in South Africa, I would have it would have been about three to four million rand. And if I had take, chosen the best performing uh, market in the world, Nasdaq, and I'm, I'm not saying I would have done it, but the number came up around 11, 10 million rand in, 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 in my pocket today. And, and that just caused a great reaction from many people. And, and, and then, of course, the tweets started flowing. So the, the property market has been in a terrible, terrible slump, and it's been confirmed by people all around the country. And I'm not only I'm talking about uh, listed, I'm talking about residential, I'm talking about listed. And very, very few people have commented or tweeted that they've actually made money in the property market. So it's, 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 it's a middle class thing. Many people are stuck with non-producing properties or very low producing uh, properties. And it costs the cost of property holding in South Africa have just gone up astronomically. Rates in taxes, levies, friction costs. I mean, those costs to sell. And in the meantime, you have to, you've got the full responsibility of paying your rates and taxes, number one. That's the number one culprit. And then secondly, your levies. And in some cases, the double or triple levies. And thirdly, you know, your cost of money. So, it hasn't been a great period for the residential and listed property market over the last 10 to 12 years. Let's f forget about investment property for a second. We'll get back to that now. For most people in South Africa, the ordinary South African, their house is their primary asset. A very small percentage of South Africans are able to benefit from the capital markets, the big bull market over the last decade that we've seen. There's simply a lack of disposable income for them to do so. How much worse off are these people 10 years later down the line in real terms? I agree with you. Um, for many people, buying a property still makes sense if they're going to stay in it, repay it, and live in it for a very long time. There's an emotional connotation. There's the stability. There's the, 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 the community aspect of living in a certain place. But 
I think there was a certain madness that gripped, that gripped the property market and people in the in, in, in the early years that I referred to. And we and, and a lot of people just thought this is the easy way to make money. A lot a lot of people would buy five to ten stands. A lot of people retired and, and put their packages into stands, thinking they were kind of they're going to enter the buy to let market, which was heavily promoted by the banks, state agents, uh, property developers, financiers, and 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 there was a hell of a uh, this was the new thing in South Africa become a property landlord baron. There were conferences and seminars. There was just so much. It was so difficult to resist this massive wave uh, of, of, of pressure to buy property and it was always sold on the basis that, you know, property, you can never lose money with property. But we've learned a lesson. Uh, it's not easy. Nothing is easy. Stock markets are not easy. Um, cryptocurrencies are not easy. Property market is not easy. So the, the bottom line is that investigate any market that is sold as an easy way to make money. So I've, I've learned my lesson and I think a heck of a lot of middle class people and even perhaps more affluent people are today stuck with non-producing uh, assets that are costing them a lot of money. I, I sent another tweet where a colleague of mine is renting a very, very expensive apartment in Bantry Bay. And we've done, we, we played with some numbers. The landlord is so glad that he has a tenant paying. Uh, he's willing to accept a, a return of about 1% to 2% on his money, which, of course, this, this, this doesn't make sense. So uh, there's a little bit of a middle-class crunch on property, and a lot of people are saying maybe uh, <laughs> we, we should have walked away from this one. How important is location, specifically in South Africa, when investing in property? Well, that's one of the, one of the aspects. When if you start investigating property and, and the associated factors that have affected property location and the area and the municipality uh, is, is, is critical. And in fact, there's a very strong correlation between well-managed uh, cities and, 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 and provinces like the Western Cape uh, versus uh, very poorly managed municipalities, cities and towns like the Northwest, like Limpopo, like the Free State, where as your community collapses around you due to lack of infrastructure, maintenance, water, sewage, your property values are actually going down to zero in many parts of the country. And that, that I've seen with my open eyes. There are many, many towns in the Free State uh, and Northwest in particular, and even in Pumalanga, where the property market has come to a standstill. And because there's just no trade, there's no buying, there's no selling, and people simply can't get out of the estate. So they still have to pay the municipality. And in many cases, they just abandon their properties. Now, it's, 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 it's a topic that we, we don't want to talk too much about, but it's happening, like the collapse of the railways and, the, and, 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 and other things. But in, in many smaller and even medium-sized towns in, in South Africa, the property market has collapsed has come, and, and there's no value. There's absolutely no value to the, the previous owners of those properties. And that, that, that's, that affects a, a, an increasing number of people on their personal balance sheet. 10, 15 years ago, they had X amount in property. Today, it's zero. They can't sell it. So it's got no value. What's the secret sauce? If you do go down the property or private property investment route, what's the secret sauce in terms of generating that 6 to 10% yield and getting capital appreciation? What would your advice be to people in that situation that do want to invest privately into property? Well, you know, forget about 10%. You know, if you're talking about pre-tax and, and gross you might get to 10%, but, you know, in the current environment with perhaps the exception of certain parts of the country, I'm talking about, you know, the Stellenbosch, Paul, Franschuk area, there you can still squeeze out as maybe a 6 7% because there's demand for property, there's a shortage of property, and those cities and towns are well run. But in other parts of the country, you're not getting 10%. You're not even getting 5%. If you do the numbers, and I looked at the average uh, no, uh, property prices from FNB, the uh, property barometer, and I actually found, got some latest stats from their economists. And for the last 13 years, your average increase in property prices, residential, 
has been um, one or two percent below inflation. So inflation was five or six, your appreciation was three to four percent. So for the last 13 years, your property in after inflation terms has gone backwards by about 25 percent. Now that's 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 a big number if you stand back. Uh, so property today in SA has become extremely, extremely cheap and, and has not kept pace with inflation. So for the last 13 years, it has not been a great investment. And, and as, I added, as I said earlier, the biggest culprit has been the mismanagement of the municipalities, which has led to more and more taxes being extracted from property owners. That number has been increasing by about between 10 and, and 14%, and in some cases more. So the poor property owners are being sucked dry by, by bad management, bad financial controls of the municipality, with the result that the net return on your property in many parts of the country, I'm not saying all of them, is is one to two percent, and uh, and and I said that a number of times, and nobody could send me some numbers to dispute it. And it is also a factor affecting listed property. Neil Gopal, who's the chairman of Sapoa, he actually said it's just a, uh, the listed properties is in a nightmare scenario because uh, rates and taxes are just killing property owners all around the country. So it's not a great space, and, and you can see it um, in, in listed property. The Over the last 10 years, in listed property in South Africa, the average return has been zero or maybe 1%. But let's call it zero. You made no money in listed property had you bought 10 years ago.